Hello, Joe Lines. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to um, either open or activate a current version of Excel using AutoHotKey. And first off, let's show here using the Task Manager, Excel is not running. It would either be up here if it was visible, or down here if it was a background process, meaning it's not visible. Excel, when you run it, when you launch it this way, and we'll see it um, pops up up here, right here, it, it's Excel, it's, you can see it's visible. By default, when you would like launch it from your regular menus, it'll be visible. But when you launch it from AutoHotKey, the default is not to be visible, you have to tell it to be visible. And when you do that, it'll be in the background process. So it obviously is still running, it's just not, doesn't have a, a window that you can actually see. So I'm going to go ahead and close this, and we'll see it disappear from here. Um, so you can, as I mentioned, you can either connect to a current Excel object, or you can um, launch it, right, depending on what you want to do. And if there is no Excel object out there, um, and I run, let me get rid of the try command here, and what this is going to do is, is it's going to say, hey, try to activate this, the current Excel application if one exists, and they'll get, I think, the most recent Excel file if there's more than one, um, and, and store a pointer to it here in this Excel file. Um, uh, I'm sorry, variable, and then here I'm saying, hey, is this variable, does it actually contain an object, right? So for me, that's one of the, when I'm troubleshooting and trying to figure out why something's not working, is I make sure, like, you know, my pointer is an object to the thing, because if it's not, nothing is going to work for you. So I'm going to reload and launch this, and look, it says operation unavailable, because there is none out there, right? So a simple tweak to, to this is just to say, you know, instead of just running that, let's say try. And what that'll do is it'll say, try that, but hey, if it doesn't work, it's not going to come up with an error. So I'm going to save this, reload it, and now when I run it, um, it returns a zero, right? And that's saying, hey, this Excel object, it's not a variable. Why is it not a variable? Because back under my task manager, Excel doesn't exist, right? Um, now if I launch Excel, ba -ba -da -ba, all right, it's launched. Now when I run this, see, it comes back as a one. And that's what's saying that's true, that Excel is an object. So let's put it in here. Oops. So now when I run this, Excel is an object. And 1 means yes, and 0 means no. Um, it's going to try it. And if there is an Excel object, it'll connect to it. Now, if it's not an Excel object, um, if there's not a live one out there, then you want to create one. Um, and that's what this next one is for. So let me get rid of that for now. Try. It's going to try this. And the way the try catch works is you can say catch. Um, and now I'm going to put in, I think I can put a print here. And what we're going to want to do is I'll make it visible first. And we're going to move that is object down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and run this. And since it's on the same line, I don't have to put the parens. Um, and then if if there's an error, if it doesn't exist, I'm going to go create uh, um, an Excel application and store the pointer to it here. Um, and then I'm going to set that thing to being, oh, actually, here I don't. Let me make it visible first. Um, make it visible. And, and actually, you know what, let's say, message box, oops, no, so there's no existing Excel object, so this is just telling me, <coughs> I'm really doing it to, 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 to make sure I know I'm in the catch instead of here, because if this part works, it's going to skip this catch part and jump right down to here. Um, so when I reload this, good, no errors, I launch it. <coughs> so because there is a current Excel object, it returns a 1, and it jumped right down to here. Notice it didn't, this message box did not come up, right? Why is that? Because it tried to connect to an Excel application, it actually worked, so it didn't do the catch part and jumped right down to here. But let's close Excel. And just to be safe, let me make sure I go in here. I don't see Excel here, and I don't see it here. So now when I run this, um, 
Oh, and, and, and normally I put in per, a percent sign here, um, which is why I add the quotes. So now it's saying, hey, it, it tried this because that didn't work. Then it goes into this catch part, and, and we're right here, so we haven't actually created the Excel object yet because I put the message box before it. So if we come up in here, you're going to see there is still is no Excel object. But when I hit OK, it went ahead and created the Excel object. Um, and now in here, it, it's still, I made it visible, so it's up here, right? And, and then we finished this last one. Okay, so that worked. Let's, um, let's do one more here. We're going to change this to say 0, right? So now it's not going to be visible. So it's going to check to see if it's out there. If it's not there, which it doesn't exist, so now we need to create one. But let me get back to Task Manager here. Um, now I'm going to hit OK. So is the object, notice there is no Excel. There's nothing over here. But over here, it's down here in this background process. Now this is, I can't tell you how important this is, because the first time when you're doing this, you may forget to set Excel to being visible. And of course, it doesn't show up here. And you'll end up, each time you do it, you can create dozens and dozens, or you know however many of background processes of Excel. And, and of course, they eat up your memory. It doesn't take up a lot, but it, it'll start eating up your memory. More importantly, you're sitting here spinning your wheels because you think it's not working when it actually it is working. It's just that they're hidden. Um, and so that's that's the intro to opening an Excel object. Obviously, there's a lot more to do, but this is can be particularly confusing. And so I use that is object to help make sure is it visible? You know, is it is it that it exists and I can't see it? Um, after that, it, it, things get much easier. Um, the one other thing I, I'd like to add is if you create a new Excel application object, you need to add a workbook um, before you can really do anything. So that's why, when, let's change this back to one. Oh, and actually, that's an interesting thing. Let me see this. So here, see how it's not visible? Because I said try connect to the current application, it would not make that visible because this is in here. So let's go ahead and um, I am going to put this down here, and now, even though it's not going to say, because there's still the Excel object, right, it's going to exist, so we won't see this window, because it skips this whole catch part, but all of a sudden this Excel window is going to become visible. Or I could be wrong. I'm not sure why, let me see here, where... So what I realized was um, when when I reload the script, so let's go ahead and we're going to run it. It's in here. It made it visible. Um, it's an object. Great. But when I hit reload, it is killing, and you can see it, it kills because this variable no longer exists. Um, AutoHockey is smart enough is it cleans up its own stuff, right? So it was disappearing. So that's why I thought it was, um, in this example, it, um, it, it actually does kill the Excel application, but um, often it doesn't. That's it. Thanks.